time for Blumpkin and Friends, starring your host, the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me today is my friend, Jamie. And Jamie's here because I want to talk to her about her military experience, which is not very much, <laughs> but still interesting. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Tell us about yourself. Mm, like, what do you want to know? How old are you? Oh God, 34. And well, how old are you when you got discharged? Oh shit. Um, you dumbass. Fuck, I don't remember. What are you, a dumbass? 21. How old were you when you started? 18 and 17. I signed up when I was 17. Okay, and then you got sent to wherever? I went to the Great Lakes for boot camp, and then after that I got shipped off to Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. Is it Norfolk or Norfolk? Because the way you just said it, it sounded funny. <laughs> well, I used to say Norfolk, but everyone else says Norfolk. So That's funnier, though. Yeah. Yeah. So you fun. were on what now? What type of base or something? It was the naval base, aircraft carrier, um, the CVN-69, Eisenhower. You know what I'm saying? Fun times. Not a lot of oceans to float in in Virginia. No. We, uh, I guess they just came back from a six-month tour, which I missed any any of it. And then um, we were dry docked for the four years I was in. Giggity! I got seven whole days out to sea. It was supposed to be ten. but How did you enjoy that seven. one week? It was awesome. Did you feel like a sailor? I was a sailor. Did you get seasick? Not at all. Did you lose your land legs? No. No? No. Nope. I can say that we uh, dumped a lot of electronics into the ocean. Well, that's comforting to know. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Well, like old boom boxes and shit or what? Like computers and stuff, government shit. Why don't they burn them? I don't know. Let's just throw them in the ocean because, you know, water. Yeah. Versus fire. We'll fuck up the ecosystem for the food supply like fish as opposed to just burning some plastic and maybe putting a few chemicals in the air that'll get worked out and recycled through trees. But yeah, no, it's, that's the military way, it seems. They just drop shit in the ocean. It happens. Like after Vietnam, I heard they just were dropping Hueys and all kinds of shit into the drink. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't want to pay to fucking bust them back. Pretty much. That's brilliant. You know. <laughs> Why pay disposal fees when you just drop it off the end of the ship? Well, why wipe your ass? You're just going <laughs> to shit again. Fuck! Yes. <laughs> so being that you were a female in the Navy, did you experience any sort of extra special hazing or sexual harassment or anything like that? Did they treat you different? Um, Not especially because I was blonde and younger and one of the more attractive females, I guess, in the division. I got office duty office duty yep so i didn't have to do any of that other hard labor crap did some guy be like here's a very special tank top for you to wear <laughs> ensign jamie no not at all make sure to tie it up in the front yeah no nope just you know doing reports and um cheating on physical exams and stuff oh does that make you feel any anger just your typical that's not very titillating shit. you said cheating and i thought it was going to go somewhere like <laughs> no somewhere dirty and naughty no, nope, there was a lot of that going on in my division, but not I. I have heard from people that I know that have been in the military that soldiers are bumping uglies. They are. Yep. Even in boot camp. Even, well, especially in boot camp. They sneak off. It's against the rules. To have sex? Yeah. Why? Because you're in boot camp. So? Your mission is to learn and be tired and That's work out a lot. How the fuck does having blue balls and being exhausted make you a better soldier? I couldn't say. Exactly. But, they treat know, it like it's fucking gladiator school from Spartacus. They made it happen. Their service week where we had to work in the uh, in the galleys and, you know, prep the foods and do the dishes. And people were uh, sneaking off to the freezers to fuck on the vegetables and, yeah, salad bar. That's sanitary. <laughs> Stock. There's no ranch dressing to be seen, but suddenly this one bowl of lettuce has some. Ew. Mmm, that's tasty. <laughs> Quite possibly. Oh, yeah. But, you know, when I worked at Burger King, they did crappy shit like that, too. Aw. Wait, fucking in the freezer or putting jizz on food? 
Um, dropping stuff on the floor and then putting it back up and making okay. the sandwiches. Had a friend hock a loogie and someone shake. Well, I'm not going there anymore. <laughs> As if it's not bad enough that you got places where they bust out play place windows because of mysterious gas leaks that are reported via phone by strangers. That's hilarious. Uh, That's the one I worked at. Yeah. Doesn't take a genius. So a lot of people probably think they know what army boot camp is like thanks to movies. Mm-hmm. What is Navy boot camp like? Um, probably a lot easier. Why? Uh, just the level of training and they're just, they're not as intense. They're not as like when we trained with guns, we didn't have to use live rounds and it was like two days worth of training. And then, you shoot um, blanks? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Murder. You know, that begs another question, right? <laughs> How many times did people point the guns with the blanks at each other and pop off a few rounds to be funny? Oh no, that was not allowed. Not allowed, but if you didn't get seen. Right. Yeah. That's what stupid people do. They're like, hey, these are fake bullets. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, shit. There was a live one in there. <laughs> Just like what happened to that lady in that training exercise, I think, down in Florida. Yeah, that shot a civilian. Yeah. The cop. Cop shot her. Mm-hmm. Florida. I heard about that. Well, Sounds what are you doing? It's a training exercise. Why are there live rounds? It was an accident. Mm-hmm. Well, anything I've ever seen has uh, live rounds have red tape around the mag okay and uh the blanks have blue like a little spot of blue tape so you know interesting well it's a system that should be fail safe unless some dumb fuck loads the mags wrong right and then you don't say clips because if you say clips you have to buy donuts that's what they taught us in uh, in firearms training for cop school yeah it's not a clip it's a magazine we didn't have to do any training about the guns cleaning breaking down no. loading just point and shoot. Fun fact about the guy that ran the range where I had my training, he had a lazy eye. He was a marksman level shooter. And he had a lazy eye. I have no fucking idea how that works. Well, it His right one. eye kind of listed <laughs> to the right. I know somebody like that. Just like, and then one day he just brings in an MP5. He's like, all right, we're going to make up some progress. Here we go. It jams. He's banging it on the floor. Quite the professional. Uh-oh, retard alert. Pretty much anyone in any profession does shit like that. So people were breaking off for hanky-panky. Yes. And how many people made passes at you? Um, just a couple. A few. <laughs> Three or four. This number keeps growing. <laughs> What's the real number? Um, five. Five. Yeah. Did any of them pull their penis out of their pants over the top of their uh, waistband like a belt buckle? No. <sighs> No. Amateurs. Just ass grabbing. That's it? Yeah. Not even tit grabbing? Nope. Just ass grabbing. Not like, hey, can you? T I can't read my watch. Can you tell me what time it is as their penis is draped over their wrist? <laughs> no. Not at all. This is not high-level sexual harassment. That's Nope. Was anybody ever just like, hey, you want to fuck? Yes, on the ship. Really? Mm-hmm. Just like, I'm bored. You want to bang? Pretty much. Yeah. What a gentleman. It happens. They're sailors. It's in the Navy. So seven to ten days at sea you spent. Did they have you work on, like, skills out there, or are you just floating? Well, during not just the seven days, but during the whole time I was on the ship, they um, actually trained me to be a firefighter. 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 The, like, kind of like the emergency response team. So we'd have duty days where you sit on the ship, kind of standing watch for 24 hours. Since I was fresh meat, they threw me at that because nobody else liked doing it. Of course not. Yes. And I thought it was fun, though. So the alarm would go off, and you'd have to run to the nearest station where gear was, don all this firefighting crap and gas masks and fucking oxygen tanks, and then run to wherever the supposed accident or fire was. And Wouldn't it be a shorter run to just get in the lifeboat? No. I don't even think I saw lifeboats on the ship. Well, that's comforting that you guys are out there fighting, <laughs> no. possibly at sea for our country, and then there's no lifeboats. Yeah, there's nothing visible. Not even like jet skis? Nope. Air skiffs? Maybe they were all like inflatable. Helicopters? Well, you know, it was an yeah. aircraft carrier, so there's aircraft upstairs. I like, like that, that the best thing you think they could come up with was inflatable rafts. Well, when you think back in the day, like in Jaws, dude was like, we're all floating around in the sea with life jackets on, the end. 
That was legit. I suppose. <laughs> it really happened. So that's what happens when a aircraft carrier goes down. It's like the movie Open Water. Pretty much. You're just waiting for the sharks You're to circle. Yes. Comforting. Yeah. Glad I didn't join the Navy. I did almost <laughs> join the Navy. I've talked about this before. Some guy that was part-time under me at the Blaine Menards uh, used to be a EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, and then I got into recruiting. So he told me, he's like, you could easily get into the uh, the office here in the Twin Cities. <laughs> and he got me all pumped for it. And then like at one point he's like, but it is a six-year commitment. So I'm like, fuck. You think you maybe you should have told me that right away? And then like, yeah. I was only partly serious considering it. And he's like, well, you're not getting cold feet, are you? I'm like, cold feet? He acts like I already fucking signed away my life. Yeah. Recruiters lie. They have numbers. Did they pull any pranks on you? Um... No, not that. No, no, no pranks. Oh. Yeah. Nobody fell overboard? Uh, yes, actually, once someone fell overboard while I was out to sea. Was um, that it? Was that kaput goodbye? Nope. They got him back in. And then um, there was, so during the seven days, it was just for us to basically expend some oil since we were planning on being dry docked. But the pilots on the ship were doing training flights and one of them overshot the landing and it didn't catch oh. the hook and they crashed into the ocean and died i hate that. when that happens during seven days of training out to sea seven days like yes. it's the ring <laughs> yes and then they died and it was uh, very sad my friend scott was in the army and uh when he was on base he like did mechanic work and they had some new fucking grunts come in and he convinced this stupid kid that they needed to get exhaust samples so he had this kid standing behind a couple of trucks with like a garbage bag, like holding it around the tailpipe nice. and then trying to tail it off. <laughs> just just take the tie. Yeah. Tie it off. Well, I don't even remember what they used to say, but they used to say something about something's on the end of the ship. You got to go all the way to the back to the end of the ship and it's back there to look for something. I never actually fell for it or went. I don't really remember what it was. My memory shot. Don't you want to try to be creative and make something up? I got no. I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. But we did. Um... Maybe it's where they take people back there to rape them. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see something funny? Check this out. It's like the third person this week that we've cornholed back here. No. They keep falling for it. I still haven't gotten the shit out of my pee hole from the last guy. <laughs> Gross. That's fucking disgusting. Because clearly, if you're going to take advantage of another man, you're not going to wear protection. It's about power. It's not gay. Right. It's all about power. Uh-huh. Man on man rapes about power, and you're not gay for raping another man. For power. Okay. <laughs> you're listening to Blumpkin and Friends. So some, even though you never saw live combat and you only did the four years, you also uh, have available to you many of the benefits of being a veteran. True. Such as interest-free home loans. Yes. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> and uh, you currently work for some branch of the VA somewhere. We won't say where. Yes. Because that's how we roll on the show. Yes. I also got free schooling. All right. Well, that's all those people that are listening that are drowning <laughs> in student loan debt are like, this bitch can eat a dick. <laughs> uh-huh. So working at the VA now mm-hmm. without, you know, naming names or anything, um, what types of things are you personally dealing with or seeing? I deal with uh, veterans with disabilities and impairments and whatnot. Brain injuries? Mm-hmm. Traumatic brain injuries. Um, stroke. Um, it's mainly the younger veterans that are freshly out or possibly even still in that have the traumatic brain injuries and the older generation with um just standard physical therapy from a bum knee or shoulder stroke stuff like that that makes me think of the episode of family guy where peter has a stroke yes for eating too many hamburgers <laughs> <laughs> and did you know when people have strokes sometimes it affects a part of their brain where they just yell out obscenities almost like tourette's that makes strokes sound hilarious yes like during the stroke or after the stroke? After the stroke. Oh, God. Yes. Fuck! I have a friend at work that her father, when he had his stroke, he used to call her asshole all the time because he couldn't remember her name. 
And so it's unfortunate. Asshole just came out. <laughs> We're making chicken for dinner, asshole. You want to come over and eat with me and your mom, huh? Yes. Asshole, hello. Yes. She hung up again. Exactly. Yes. The fuck is going on with my little girl? <laughs> well, she's like one of seven, so. I had a guy where I work that was uh, serving a little bit of time, and he had a TBI, and he had the shakes and shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, I think he had, like, a scar here on the side of his head. And I asked him finally, you know, what happened. And I tried to do it as, like, gently as possible because I didn't want to, like, make him feel self-conscious about it. I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to make this awkward, but I am noticing your hand shaking. Is it due to some combat injury? And he told me, yeah, he was in a Humvee convoy, Mm -hmm. and they drove over an IED, flipped his Humvee, banged the shit out of his head. Yeah. So he sleeps a lot, and sometimes he stutters. His short-term memory is somewhat affected, and he's he's got the shakes, gets tremors. Really nice guy. And I know I don't skew towards the more serious stuff on this show versus the podcast. Um, so many of these young soldiers that are going off are coming back with these injuries that are fucking them up for life. And it's just sad because right out of the gate, they try to get them when they're young, right out of high school. They train them up. They ship them out. You do your duty. You come back, hopefully, in one piece. But I don't think anybody really comes back whole. And I see so many of these guys that are a lot like this. Mm -hmm. People that I know, people that I see at work. Obviously, the people you see in public, like with service dogs and shit. I don't know if I could do what you do. Just based on like the emotional factor of how sad it would be, because mm-hmm. uh, we do not take care of our veterans. We give better treatment and care to committed sex offenders trying to treat them than we do in the current climate of the uh, state level and also national level VA system to give them the medical care that they deserve for the service that they've put in. And that's my serious two cents there. Roadhouse. I I'm agree. sure I could do it, but I agree. It is sad. There will be times when I'll see patients that are the same age as my brother, 22, 23, and they're in a wheelchair, uh, scars all over their head, missing a limb, uh, barely able to talk, and then this one was just repetitive. My leg hurts, and his nurse was like, I know, honey. He's like, my my arm hurts. She's like, I know. He's like, my chest hurts. She's like, I know, honey. There's nothing you can do about it because he's just in constant pain. All the time, he's just constant pain? Yes. So he's got some nerve damage that causes his brain to, like, send triggers to every single limb of his body. Something, yes. That sounds awesome. Yeah. sure that's not what he signed up for. No. Yeah, it's depressing sometimes. But then you get the older gentleman. Yes. Yes. So there was this 92-year-old patient. World War II vet. And he... um, was coming in to try to get an appointment and he proceeded to hit on me. Um, Why not? (laughs) To take me out to dinner. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I got kids. I got to go home and get them. He's like, oh, I love kids. I said, oh, that's nice. He's like, well, I was married for 32 years, but I've been widowed for about 45. Awesome. So I really need a woman. (laughs) I'm like, oh, do ya? You don't need a woman, sir. You need a fucking time machine. (laughs) He's like, would you, so, you know, let's go out to dinner. I was like, I'm sorry, it's against the rules to date a patient. And um, he was, you know, in a wheelchair, and he's like, well, I've got neuropathy in both my legs, but uh, everything else works. He's 92. (laughs) He'd probably have to tie two popsicle sticks together with some fish line to even get that thing to be half erect. Well, he seemed pretty frisky for his age and the fact that he was in a wheelchair. Yeah, but a lot of people can make up for lack of ability with uh, charisma. Yeah. He, Plus, he's got old balls. He's, he was older. He was on the heftier side. He had yeah. one of his eyes was kind of clouded over. This sounds sexy. <laughs> yeah, <it's> hilarious. <laughs> Let me take you to the old country buffet. <laughs> It's seafood night on Thursdays. Yes. You can have all you can eat. <laughs> Save room for later. That happens a lot with the older gentlemen. Really? The older generation, yeah. They're I either a little too frisky too. or trying to be really 
Would you like to be my fifth wife type of... Fifth wife. <laughs> well, gee, that sounds awesome. <laughs> awesome track record. Why don't I give that a shot? See, when I get hit on at work, it's more along the lines of they're trying to delve for personal information. And I give them like either non-answers or total bullshit. Yeah. I love that. I love just to lie to them. Like uh, once upon a time ago, over the span of an entire week, they were trying to figure out my ethnicity. And they thought I, one girl asked if I was uh, native because she said her son's native and I kind of look like her son. Another girl asked me if I was Israeli. Then somebody asked if I was mixed, like uh, mulatto. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Horrible term. Why is that? Fucking I don't know because people are pussies. I, I guess originally it had a very derogatory meaning. Hmm. But what if you start using it positively? Well, I always thought mulatto was the more, um, the nicer way to put it. Well, what the hell could you say that's not nice? I don't know. Mixed? Mutt? Mutt would be... Mixed isn't bad. I've, I don't know. I've had more than one inmate, plus both genders, ask me if I'm mixed. Some black guy's like, you're mixed, right? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I'm all the way white. But back to the broads trying to guess my uh, ethnicity. Yeah. And one girl's like, um, are you Yemeni? I'm like... Are you fucking serious? Are you throwing darts at a map now and just calling out random countries? What does someone from Yemen even look like as opposed to somebody from any other part of that region? Do you know? No. I'm just guessing. <laughs> By the end of the week, she actually guessed that I was Italian. But I'm like, there's a very specific kind of Italian that I am, where my ancestry comes from, and I don't think you'll get it. And she didn't. Which, my grandma's family was from Sicily. Hmm. And I forget which movie this is. It might be uh, Reservoir Dogs, where they joked at the table that uh, Sicilians are the niggers of Italy. I heard that. I'm like, oh, my God, that's awful and funny (laughs) at the same time. What? So I did some research on that. And I guess a lot of, like, African blacks migrated there Mm -hmm. or were dropped off there on the way to be slaves and shit like that. So there were a lot of half Africans that mixed with Italians and then people didn't like them so they went down to the island of Sicily or some shit like that. I'm not reading out of a book right now. Clearly I'm spitballing <laughs> off of something I read off of the internet a while ago. So you really could be mixed. I could. I don't know. Fucking, like I'd be Far probably one eighth black. Not mm. enough to get college tuition. <laughs> I don't know. He just, the guy that asked me if I was mixed, I don't know if he was going on because I have kind of like a rounded end of my nose Mm -hmm. but i don't think it's like round enough to be considered i don't think so either almost negroid like that's not a bad word you can say negroid it's a descriptive word for a type of people in a different kind of uh it's an ugly word though it kind of sounds like hemorrhoid i suppose (laughs) so let's not use that term (laughs) blackish you could say that I don't know. It makes sense because a lot of Italian people have fuller lips and bigger noses. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when you stereotype black people, they're like, they always got big lips and big noses, which is wrong. They don't all have that. (laughs) It's just stereotyping. So, well, really, we all came from Africa anyway, if you follow the lineage theory of that. We all came from Africa. And once upon a time ago, all the continents were a giant supercontinent called Pangea. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all a little black. Yes. We're just not all like Wesley Snipes black. No. <laughs> he is black as fuck. <laughs> Jesus. You're listening to Blunkin' and Friends. We have reached the portion of the show where we play a game. Uh-oh. And I regret to inform you oh, God. that it is time to play Guess Who Karaoke Roulette. Guess Who Karaoke Roulette. Oh, uh, yeah. So here's the deal. Uh, One famous person, five clues. You get three guesses to figure out who it is. So that's three strikes. Mm, I don't know names. Well, this should be an easy one. I tried to phone this one in. If you lose, like if you can't get it, you got to sing a crappy pop song. If you get it, I have to sing a crappy pop song. Oh, Jesus. Clue number one, red hair. Clue number two. Known for incredible amounts of energy, possibly to the point where they might have ADHD. Nothing. Clue number three. Has an insatiable libido. Fuck. 
red hair. Clue number four. First appeared in 1975. Jesus Christ. It's not Jesus Christ. <laughs> no. Is that an official guess? No. No. Okay. Number five. World class drummer. I will repeat for you. Red hair. Incredible amounts of energy. An insatiable libido. Debuted in 1975. World class drummer. Yeah, I got nothing. Think drummers. I don't know names. You don't know names. I don't. Okay, frequently seen sporting a bandana on one wrist and a chain on the other. It's just kind of this person's garb. No. Got nothing. Jesus Christ. I know, I suck. Don't make me sing. You're going to have to do that for me. Uh, I'll give you another hint. Oh, shit. Big eyes. What the fuck? With red hair, incredible energy, an insatiable libido, and a world-class drummer. <laughs> um, First appeared in 1975. Mm -hmm. I didn't say born in 1975. Yeah. Said first appeared. Still before I was Might born. be a fictional character. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Your finger tapping is going to get picked up by the microphone. I got, no, no, I got nothing. That's terrible. Oh, fuck, wait. Um, animal? Yes! Jesus Christ. First guess! How about that? God, I gave it away. <laughs> yes, Again. Yes, Ah, well. Should do some, like, Britney Spears or something. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> I don't know. Some, some TLC. I don't want to sing no scrubs. <laughs> Could you please? I don't think that would work good for me. That would be that would be a good one. Or Red Light Special or whatever. I don't know Red Light Special. Nobody knows that song. Oh, I know that song. You're, like, one of three people. Waterfalls? No. Terrible. <laughs> okay, so ladies' choice, that's your pick. That's your pick is me singing TLC's No Scrubs. Yes. Go right to hell. <laughs> You're going to like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, what are those? What are those? What is that? Well, I don't know why you would need lyrics. Because I don't fucking memorize the whole song. Why do you need lyrics? Because I want it to be good. Because <laughs> if I don't know them, then I just make shit up on the fly. And sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't. So apparently with me singing this, I'm going to sound like a gay man. Yes. Because it's about dudes. Well. How you fellas doing? Switch it up a little bit. Okay. Well, you did win. I did. All right. Scrub is a guy who thinks he's fly and is also known as a buster. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke ass. So, no, I don't want your number, no. I don't want to give you mine, and no. I don't want to meet you nowhere, bitch. I don't want none of your time, no. I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. I'm not kidding. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Trying to give me AIDS. I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Try to holler at me. That's all I'm going to sing. That's all you get. That is all you get. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I bet you liked it, didn't you? <laughs> well, that's what I get for losing the game. <laughs> Interact with the show on Twitter at Blumpkin Show. That is at Blumpkin Show. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Blumpkin and Friends. I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. I am Jamie. Good night.
Dodo, oh bia bia bia, et sa tivi, pipra pra Dodo, no mama.